quite a, it's quite a depressing thing to see these numbers in black and white, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's more than depressing. I, I think it's quite devastating to see that because we're nowhere near the recovery that we were expecting in the job market. And if you recall, our president called for five million jobs over the next five years. Well, successive fact, pre presidents yeah, have, have, have come up with correct. this. I mean, right from 1994 through to the, the current leadership, we've heard this all the time, and there's been various committees and there's been various initiatives, all very worthy, but no delivery. Absolutely none whatsoever. But in fact, we're moving backwards. And in fact, they're retarding the growth of jobs. Uh, tomorrow, we in Parliament, we're going to hear the amendments, the suggested amendments to both the Labor Relations Act and the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. Now, those two pieces of legislation are making it more odious for people to do business. And you know as well as I do that a lot of the job creation is perception. In other words, when small business wants to create new jobs, they need to have a perception that they're going to do well in the future. Now, all these retardants are giving that perception that, no, the economy is getting worse, that we must pull back like a sea anemone when you touch it. Business is pulling back. And they're doing that. They've been doing that for the past two years. And our government is giving them nothing to show that we've got a rosy future. Expand, take on new products, do new things. No one's doing that. And I know from my client base, they're saying that all the time. They're saying, but I keep reading this. And why must I? I'd rather leave my money in a bank let me earn some money like that instead of trying to create new jobs. And I know for a fact that uh, there's a, a great private participation in the public sector as well. I mean, there are people going to government all the time and saying, this is what we should be doing. This, this, uh, uh, let's advise you on this. But consistently, it just seems to fall away. It's just a load of hot air. I mean, uh, what, what do we do? Is it a top-down approach? Is it a bottom-up approach? I mean, how does it work? What can we do to create jobs? Well, obviously, one needs to start looking at the perception. One needs to have a look at that partnership between Casato and government. I think Casato is pulling them backwards. They're fighting for people who have already got jobs to try and create decent jobs. In other words, the man's got a job, let's pay him more money or give him less uh, time to work or something of that nature. Whereas government is saying, how do we go and try and create jobs? But the minute the private sector have come in and say, here's some ideas, Here's the Planning Commission, the National Planning Commission will feed much information in there. As soon as that happens, Cosotis pulls back. So we've spent the last 14 months at NEDLAC negotiating some of the changes to the labor law. Some of the business changes that were suggested and accepted at NEDLAC immediately, as soon as that then becomes the reality hits that, that discussion, Cosota goes behind the back, goes to speak to the Minister of Labor, and then they pull that, that move forward backwards. So do you think that Casata is exerting an, an unnecessary and overweight Absolutely. influence on, on the, the people right at the top? And at, at what point do we actually say, look, the Charter Pater Alliance is fantastic. It's delivered us a certain amount. But on this issue, we have to break it now. And we have to say, Casato, get in line and let people uh, employ people and let people sack people if necessary. Well, absolutely. Absolutely do we have a problem with that alliance between Kasatu and the government. Mm. Yes, the Communist Party is also adding their own tuppence worth into the situation, which creates even further problems. But my issue has been that whenever government comes up with a good idea, and we see the NPC coming up with some good ideas, some ways forward, we see our uh, Pravin Gordon, for instance, has come forward with a lot of good, solid, workable solutions. The minute he opens his mouth on anything to do with labor, he is shot down in flames and then he's quiet afterwards and you can't blame him. Mm. He's getting that pressure. So here we've got the tail wagging the dog. We've got Kosatu wagging the ANC and the ANC at the end of the day should be looking forward to trying to create a better, a better economy and a bigger tax base. Mm. And what are we doing? We're pulling it back. And we, we, the only job growth we're really seeing over here from this report is the growth in government which is negative in, in the first instance because this is just drawing money out of the fiscus mm. and it's not creating, it's not creating more tax. Well, look at the bloated economies of uh, Italy and Spain. Look Correct. at the public servants there. There was an article, I was talking about Sicily earlier to a commentator in, in Johannesburg and uh, the, 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 he said that this chap was sent into the 
public uh, buildings of Sicily to have a look at what was going on. It just said people just walking around corridors. I mean, they're employed, so there are statistics. So the unemployment rate is, is kept down in Sicily, but they're doing absolutely nothing. Not quite the same in South Africa, but an awful lot of fat, I think, that needs to be cut off. Well, I, I think it is almost the same in South Africa because we've got this growth, this enormous growth that we get a report from the Reserve Bank that the real growth in this is government, is government jobs. Now, that's not growth. That means we've got more pen pushers, we've got more people who are drawing from the fiscus instead of creating tax. Um, that's not acceptable. We then got calls for nationalization of mines, which put an enormous dampener on everything. Now they're saying, oh, well, let's just tax them out of, out of hell um, so that we don't want people to put it in. At the same time, when you ask people to put money into a mine, then you say, well, we haven't got the electricity to give you. Um, so please uh, s stop producing and they have had to do this recently. I know you said it was about three or four years ago, but right now as we're experiencing downturns, they're asking, they're going to the, uh, the mining industry and they're saying, please, can you stop producing for a few hours or hold it off for a few days? Let's not develop anymore. And if that's the case, then that sends that message. It filters all the way down to the small businessman sitting in a small town saying, whoa, I'm reading all this, I'm seeing all this on television. Maybe what I should do is leave my money and let's wait and see. And we know that there's enormous money sitting in banks waiting to go out there into development mm. and to create jobs. It's interesting because I noticed that uh, Casato has been one of the uh, unions that has been very vociferous in its lobbying of Jill Marcus at the Reserve Bank. Now, Jill Marcus and her team cut the rates unexpectedly last week in many people's eyes from 55 to 5%. I didn't really see them saying, oh, well done, um, th th this is a positive move. And I think one of the reasons might be because if we look back at 2010 when the repo rate was 7% and growth was 35 to 4%, we're now looking at a repo rate of 5% and the growth rate is at best maybe 2.5%. So clearly on its own, monetary policy is a blunt tool and you've got to introduce a few of the things that you've been talking about in order to get unemployment down. At the beginning of 2010, unemployment was 25%. Today, after 2% interest rate, interest rate cuts, it's also 25%. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work, but it's getting worse in the sense if you look at the figures from 17 years old to 35 years old, that's one in every two job seekers in that age category are out of work. Isn't that an Arab Spring in the making? I mean, it's right here in front of our eyes that mm. half that working population, or should be working population, are out on the streets. What, what can they turn to? Crime? Or do they turn to striking in the streets? What do they turn to? And mm. it's a real problem. And I think we're right here now. It's not, this is not something in the making. I no. think we're here. It's got the potential, I think, Michael, but I don't think it's going to happen. The difference between us and certain of the uh, Arab Spring nations, if we can call them that, is that there is not democracy in, the, in those nations or wasn't democracy in those nations, whereas we do have a well-developed democracy here in South Africa.